What is up, YouTube? What is up, family? We have another Patreon request, and this time I'm going to get schooled. German political parties. Don't we love talking about politics? It's like one of the best conversations you could have with people. Just bring up politics. Y'all be so happy. You'll start hugging, kissing. You'd be like, become best friends. No, actually, you become like instant enemies. So never talk about politics. So, uh, all right, well, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to, we're going to, I'm going to, I'm going to learn a little bit. And uh, since I know absolutely nothing about German politics, uh, I will just, I have to believe what he says. And uh, then we'll see in the comments whether you guys are like, uh, nah, man, he, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Or, yeah, he's right. That's about how it is. Okay. So we'll see what you guys think. But for me, uh, I'm about to get, uh, I'm going to learn a little something for 13 minutes. So let's see how this goes. The political parties in Germany. Who are they? What do they do? And what do people think of them? Well, let's find out. Well, I'm sure most of you hate it. Because <laughs> we always hate our political parties, governments. I mean, we always hate them. So I'm going to assume most of them are like, yeah, this, they suck. That's, I'm just going to assume. But let's see. So until there are dozens of parties in Germany, but for national politics, we can focus on just six. Dozens. Seven if you're a pedantic know it all. And how do we know these six are the important ones? Well, they're the only ones with seats in the national parliament. The other ones are rather too small to get in or too regional to matter. I'm sorry, Magdeburger Gartenpartei? We're here for the big guys. Just like most democracies on this planet, German politics were once dominated by two major parties. One of the broad, more progressive center-left and one of the broad, more conservative center-right. But as we shall see, the whole power dynamic has changed quite a bit, especially in recent years when minor parties have become much more relevant and powerful. There will be time codes for all of these, but for now let's start with Die Sozialdemokratische Partei Deutschlands, SPD. This is the supposedly big party of the center left. It's the oldest party in Germany, emerging from socialist movements of the 1860s before moderating into what it is today. If you're familiar with any of the many Labour parties around the world, like the UK one, or the New Zealand one, or the Dutch Partei von Arbeit, you probably have a good idea of the SPD's basic profile. SPDs? Isn't that a sexual disease? Oh no, that's STD. Never mind, that's STDs. Ne never mind. Which is being a party of solidarity. A kind of solidarity that's expressed by a strong welfare state focusing on the working class as well as overall social and economic justice. Accordingly, their main focus has always been on the blue-collar worker, you know, your coal miner, metal worker, cleaner, hands-on kind of jobs. Poor people. Yeah, people that, you know, can't survive these days anymore. I got you. I got you. But these days, they're really struggling to keep that aura of the grand old workers' party alive. No. You might be getting different explanations for why that is, depending on if you're talking to a more left-wing social democrat or a more pragmatic moderate. Those two wings of the party tend to clash from time to time. But either way, just know that the SPD was the big left party for decades. On to their right-wing rival. The Christlich Demokratische Union, oh, the Christian. CDU. The <laughs> CDU is a juggernaut in German politics. Most of our chancellors have been CDU, which makes them the sort of default power party. But just like the SPD, their shine's starting to wear <laughs> off a little. When foreigners hear the name Christian Democratic Union, they often think that it's a sort of hardline religious group, which, let me be clear, it's definitely not. No, oh, okay. they're just sort of culturally Christian, right? So moderately conservative, sort of the more regressive, cautious force, in line with many of the right-wing parties across the continent. Traditionally, they're made up of social Christians, economic liberals, and conservatives. And no, I didn't just come up with these categories. No, the party quite ostentatiously advertises with these three pillars of the union. But you won't be wrong just calling them the Conservative Party of Germany. As such, they're most concerned with things like public safety, tradition, frugal spending, things like that. Oh, and overall, they're quite moderate, which has won them many elections, but just like with the SPD, there's a growing desire from the more ideological wing of the party to become more unapologetically conservative again. Okay, so far so easy, right? Two parties split oh, yeah, along the very... standard Western left-right divide. And the thing is, we would have almost been stuck with that two-party system if it weren't for Die Freie Demokratische Partei, FTP. Oh, yeah, this little guy has always managed to squeeze in. <laughs> the word free should have already given away what the Free Democrats stand for. Freedom. Or if you want to be fancy, we could also call it liberalism. 
How exactly that freedom is defined may vary between the different factions of the party. You know, you've got your social liberals, economic liberals, and national liberals, which is what we call the sort of right-wing libertarian kind of liberal. But really, these differences are minuscule. The important bit is they all agree that the individual should be at the center of all policy. That makes them both very open and progressive in a kind of we shouldn't tell other people how to live stance, as well as what? You shouldn't tell people how to live. What? Never heard of such a thing. What? I, I need to I need to hear that again. I, I've never heard of that before in my entire life. Hold, hold on. They're both very open and progressive in a kind of we shouldn't tell other people how to live stance, as well as very capitalist. Wow, so they're all about lower taxes, decreasing bureaucracy and what? competition. Oh my goodness. Do they actually do that or they just say that to get elected and then ignore it? Because that's how, that's how it works over here. Everybody says that, but when once they're elected, you're like, uh, remember when you said you would do this and that and this and this and this and that? Uh, what happened? Do you guys have that problem too? Yeah, we have that problem here. Uh, anyway, yeah, it's a nice thought. It's a nice thought. If you are into that sort of politics, chances are that you're from a sort of upper middle class to upper class household. Maybe you're a big shot business person or self-employed or you founded one of these trendy hipster startups. Or at least that's the sort of person that usually votes for the FTP. Well, that and farmers. Now, I already mentioned that the FTP was sort of the reason we didn't end up with a two-party system, and I mean that quite literally. There were a few decades when we only had three parties in parliament, the two big ones and then the FTP as the small third option. But don't think small equals unimportant. No, that was actually a really comfortable situation for the FTP to be in, because they alone could choose who would rule the country. I mean, obviously not alone alone, but the success of the FTP always made it so that neither of the big parties could get an outright majority. And that's how the liberals earned the rather unflattering title of the kingmaker, who's only there to break the tie. But these days they're really trying to get away from that image by highlighting their tech savviness, for example. Bündnis 90, die Grünen. Next up are the Greens who came in much, 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 much later, like we're talking the 1980s here. The Greens are actually quite different from all of the other parties, since they grew out of these protest movements from the late 60s to late 70s, who advocated for all sorts of issues like women's rights, uh, anti-war, anti-nuclear power and obviously environmentalism. And they kept that revolutionary spirit going even after they upgraded to a proper party. Like, look, look at them. Look how uncomfortable he is. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, do I really have to talk to this hippie? Do we, do, do we have to listen to this hippie? <laughs> look at his shirt, too. <laughs> oh, man. All right. <laughs> All right, Woodstock, let's go. All those high-class politicians suddenly sitting next to literal hippies knitting in parliament. Now, obviously, the old parties weren't happy with those green weirdos. I bet they don't even shower, they'd say. <laughs> but then came a time in which the liberals firmly placed themselves at the right hand of the conservatives. Suddenly, the Labour Party was without a partner. Mm. I think you can see where this is going. <laughs> hey, psst. Hey, green guy. I, I didn't mean what I said about you and not showering. <laughs> you actually smell quite nice. And thus came to be what's been considered kind of the natural state of German politics ever since, a red-green alliance as counterweight against a liberal conservative one. Uh. Since then, the Greens have undergone a sometimes messy evolution, with lots of infighting between their more left fundamentalist wing called the Fundis and their more moderate, sometimes even conservative wing, the Realos. However, that division yeah, seems to disappear a little, since the Greens have grown so much in the recent years, like they've become massively popular, Really? at least for the time being. They're still a very explicitly feminist party and fairly interventionist economically, but they try to soften the edges a bit to seem more appealing to a wider audience. It's 1989, David Hasselhoff has just torn down the wall, East and West will finally reunite, what a major historical event! You'd expect the end of the Cold War to be a pretty big political earthquake, wouldn't you? One that's surely gonna leave its mark on the German party system. But remarkably, it wasn't. The few parties that did emerge from the New East were quickly sucked up by their already existing Western counterparts. Just like basically everything about the East. The only exception is Die Linke, which is THE Eastern Party. 
So you might already be aware that East Germany was a dictatorship for 40 years. It was ruled in this very repressive way by one single party, the Socialist Unity Party or SED. But here's the thing, when the wall fell and East Germany finally got some proper democracy, that party was not outlawed. No, it got to continue in the United Germany, but now reduced from a singular unopposed regime to just one of many contenders in the democratic process. One with minimal success. Turns out having led a dictatorship doesn't actually sound good on your resume. So in order to rebrand itself, the SED quickly changed its name to PDS, the Party of Democratic Socialism. The old Western parties were of course very much opposed to this new party, like even more so than against the Greens. But by this time the PDS had already assumed a new role, that of the Niche Interest Party for Eastern Germans. Turns out many people from the East were nostalgic, or at least sympathetic to the SED. So even though the Eastern Bloc had collapsed, socialism was very much still on the table. A little detour. What's the difference between socialism and social democracy? In many countries the word socialism can mean a whole bunch of things, from public health care to abolishing property. And if the word social democracy is even used... Abolishing property? What? It's usually understood to be on the same spectrum as socialism. But I think most Germans would probably cringe at that since historically we understand those two terms to be different categories. Now I know there are a whole bunch of scientific definitions for those words, but I think conventional wisdom in Germany has it that socialism tries to overcome capitalism, whereas social democracy tries to rein in its destructive powers. <laughs> Again, you might call this just a matter of degree, but here we perceive those two parties to be on different slots of the political spectrum. One of Why must everything be so complicated? ...them with considerably more historical baggage. Just to finish this off, it's actually quite hard for me to see what kinds of factions there are within Die Linke. I mean, obviously there are all sorts of flavors of different doctrinaire socialist beliefs, with most of them belonging to a more settled professional class. But then you do get the occasional nutcase who's still under surveillance of the German intelligence service. So for many people it's kind of a mixed bag. Despite that, there has been a lot of talk recently about including the Linke into the center-left alliance together with the SPD and the Greens. The argument is that we're now 30 years removed from unification and that the old guard has surely given way for a new generation of socialists to emerge who have nothing to do with the old dictatorship. You know, they just want to advocate for better wages and fighting poverty, but that's still up for debate. Die Linke is still associated with these radical economic proposals, as well as a weird pro-Russia stance. So we'll see. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Okay, last one. Last shirt? Controversial. You get a lollipop if you know how many shirts he changed into for this one video. You get a lollipop. The Alternative für Deutschland, yeah. AfD. Oh. Hey, the AfD was founded in 2013 by a bunch God. of right-wing conservatives who mainly campaigned on getting rid of the euro and returning to Germany's old national currency. Boring. <laughs> yes. But no, believe it or not, that was actually quite shocking. Our political parties share a large consensus, so they're all broadly for the European Union, they're all broadly for the same economic system, and they all broadly agree that climate change is really bad. And now the AFD came in to, you know, shake things up a bit. Back then in 2013 I thought so the AFD might become the sort of mirror image of Die Linke, where they occupy the same kind of spot in our political scene, just on the opposite side. You know, one where they criticize the moderate center from a more ideological, populist perspective. That didn't happen. Mm. Instead what happened was that the AFD was quickly taken over by far-right extremists with overt ties to neo-Nazi organizations with just despicably racist, homophobic, revisionist beliefs. The supposedly conservative side of the party has for the most part been on board with this partnership, although some have left out of protest including the original founder of the party, which can never be a good sign. Yeah, and you can imagine their positions. They style us themselves as a sort of fighters against SJW culture, they're hard on immigrants, they are the only rescue for a dying Germany. And that Oh, so they're your Republicans. Oh, I got you. That would be the good right. Like, maybe the conservatives are too mild. Maybe we did need a more staunchly right-wing party in parliament. But there's this vicious anti-democratic tendency that permeates the entire party, which is just sad. 
And yeah, in case you're wondering, the other parties have erected a giant wall between themselves and the AFD, deeming them basically untouchable. Will the AFD actually gain power? Like maybe someday, but not now. Like if the Greens or Die Linke have taught us anything, then that with more moderation, you will gain power in Germany. If you don't moderate, you're out. Hmm. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, another shirt. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't exactly end this on a high note, did I? I still hope you had fun and hopefully you now understand a little bit more about sort of German pol uh, politics. I, I, I've learned that uh, it's even more complicated than our crap. Yeah, mm -hmm. you, you guys, uh, yeah, that's a lot of parties. A lot of parties. Just thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, stay civil in the comments, like obviously. Don't battle to the death. It's just YouTube. Why would people battle to the death in comments about politics? And, yeah, love yourself. I love myself. Bye. Love yourself. All right, look, uh, well done. So I got to say, well done. I even remember half that stuff. Uh, oof, you know, a lot of people, uh, this can be very boring. And it can be uh, very interesting. For others uh you know people sometimes as soon as you even like mention the p word for politics it's like, oh don't want, stop just stop don't want to talk about it don't even want to listen don't want to hear about it stop so i get that part but uh man yeah you, you guys uh oof that's that's a that's a that's a lot of different opinions going on and it's funny how each one has their own little set of power it's just like uh i don't know You can get a whole bunch of people that just say, uh, we don't like video games. Let's become a party and push the word out that we don't like video games. Like, is it, it should, I don't know. It just seems like it's almost too easy to, to form a party just because you have like one, I don't know. Everybody's allowed their opinion. That's absolutely true. I hate that word, by the way. Uh, ah, never mind. I'm not going to get into that. The, the the anything phobia it's like wait a minute so if i disagree or don't like something it automatically becomes a phobia I, i'm like scared or something no that's i hate that no 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 there's no phobia <laughs> that's made up on your end you know the transphobia uh, homophobia uh I, is there one for lesbians i have no idea uh, phobia of anything, basically. You, you, scared of the dark, I understand. Okay, you, the light goes out, you're like, oh, that's, that's phobia. <laughs> not, oh, that's a gay guy. Oh my God. That's not phobia. You, you know what I mean? Like, that would be phobia. But like, no, I don't agree with how they live their lives. Like, no, that's not a phobia. That's just an opinion. It's an opinion. You have every right to an opinion. I'll always believe that. You have a right to any damn opinion you want. You don't have the right to act on it and become violent. Like, oh, that guy's gay. All right, now I'm going to beat the shit out of him. No, no, you can't do that. Be well, I don't agree with the way he lives his life. Well, that's okay that you don't agree with the way he lives his life. But you, you can't be violent. You can't touch him. You can't say offensive things. You know what I mean? But you're allowed that opinion. It doesn't make you... A phobia of anything that's just my one little thing i wanted to add you know to the to this crazy world that we live in but uh yeah it you know from what i heard <laughs> and it's the same thing in every country what do we want at the end of the day we want good health plans medical we want good medical we want to be able to pay our bills Paying for their, our children, you know, college, education. They need cars. We need insurance. You know, at the end of the day, we want to be able to survive. We're not asking to be millionaires. We just want to survive. And guess what? Have enough money that maybe two weeks out of the freaking year, you could say, hey, family, let's go on vacation. That's it. I think that's, that's really, that, that's it. That's the dream. I don't need a mansion. I'd like a bedroom, you know, a couple bedrooms for me, my wife, my kids. You know what I mean? 
maybe have a guest over. Hey, you could sleep in a bedroom. We have an extra one. That's all. Not, not, no, you could, you know, we have 17 rooms, 16 bathrooms. Uh, yeah, you know, no, we don't, that's not what we're looking for. I don't need a Lamborghini. Just need a vehicle to get me to work. That's it. That's what most people are looking for. That's, it's just my opinion. And it's just, it's every country <laughs> with the same thing. But yet every single government Fs it up and fails. I, I don't know what to tell you. Anyway, for me, politics is like 98% failure. That's what politics is to me. Maybe 2% get it right. And they have no power, so it never works anyway. All right. Whew. German politic parties. Political, sorry. German political parties. Explain. How much do have I learned? Uh, I mean, not much. <laughs> Little, I mean, it's just complicated, but it's 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 really not that different from 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 even here. It's not that different. The United States is is really not that different at all. It's the same shit, same shit. All right, guys. Anyway, babbling and babbling. I gotta get out of here. I'm babbling my ass off. Take care. Peace out. Have a good night. And let me know if this guy was right, wrong, and doesn't know what he's talking about. You know, what do I know? I'm just, I'm taking his word for it. So let me know. Peace out.